Me too. Welcome back to What's in the Shop. Got a lot of stuff to go through today. Some really cool stuff. And I'm going to tell you a little story. It's all going to be interlinked like connect the dots. So I hope I don't talk too fast and you can stay with me. But we're going to get all the way from Tom Waits to Nick Lowe and everything in between. And you'll understand why when the story finishes. Let's start with Mr. Tom Waits. This came into the shop recently. This limited edition cloth bound slip case giant book. Look, it's bigger than my head. From Anton Corbin on Tom Waits. Very, very beautiful book. Really cool. Pretty heavy too. If you're a Tom Waits fan, you'll love this. And I have one now here at the shop. You know, Tom Waits started his career in 73. Only had one hit record that went to number six. Only one top 10 record in his whole career. Crazy. Although he did have an Academy Award nominated soundtrack that he did, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. He was romantically involved for a short while, for a couple years with Ricky Lee Jones. You may remember her with her big hit, Chuck E's In Love. Chuck E is Chuck E Weiss, who was a mutual friend of both of them. Chuck had heard Ricky Lee Jones singing outside one night while he was washing dishes as a dishwasher at the Troubadour. He told Tom about her, and when Tom met Ricky, oh my gosh, madly in love. They shared a lot of the same interests, mainly boho lifestyle, lots of booze, crazy jazz and beat poets and so on and so forth. Tom is actually quoted <laughs> in regards to Ricky as saying, you can learn a lot about a woman by getting smashed with her. Obviously, they did that a lot. After Ricky started to bust onto the scene, she's got a lot of press, got to go tour Europe and everything, and drugs and everything kind of took their toll and the two broke up. But looking back, Tom had said about Ricky that she's much older than I am in street year, in street wisdom, which is odd coming from Tom. Sometimes I think she's more ancient than dirt, but on the other hand, I can see she's just a little girl. Obviously, he cared about Ricky a lot, and the two had something very special for such a short time. Which leads me to my next point. When they broke up, Ricky recorded her second album called Pirates, and that album became, well, it's considered a classic in the heartache genre. NPR rated that album as number 49 in their list of 150 greatest albums ever recorded by women, and VH1 called Ricky Lee Jones one of the, well, put her in the top 100 performers, female performers ever. Pirates, sadly, I sold a few weeks ago, but I do have this by Ricky Lee Jones. This came right after Pirates. This is A Girl at Her Volcano. And this actually contains the very first song, let me turn that down, that Ricky Lee Jones recorded for Pirates called Hey Bub. You know, about Ricky Lee Jones, it's interesting. As she burst onto the scene and got more and more popular, she was put on the cover of Rolling Stone in August 79, I think it was. That issue with Ricky Lee Jones, her very first appearance on Rolling Stone, was the biggest selling issue ever. Sadly, a year later, John Lennon got killed and he became one of the biggest selling issues. But both of those covers of Ricky Lee Jones and John Lennon were shot by Annie Leibovitz, so that's interesting to note. Ricky Lee Jones was asked by Francis Ford Coppola to record with Tom Waits for his upcoming movie in 1980 called One from the Heart. Ricky Lee Jones turned it down. It was just too, still too fresh to be around Tom again. So Tom had to go record with someone else. And that was Crystal Gale. This here is Crystal Gale's We Must Believe in Magic LP. This came out in 77. This is her biggest selling LP to date. Well, maybe aside from the greatest hits, but it's the, the very first platinum record by a female country artist ever. Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue was the big hit off of this. Went to number one in the country charts, went to number two in the crossover charts. Crystal's considered the one who kicked in the door for future female crossover artists like Shania Twain, Faith Hill, and, and others like that. Interesting to note, in 1983, people called her one of the most beautiful, well, in their 50 most beautiful people in the world, 
Crystal Gale was nominated as such. You know, and interesting to note, on this breakout album, Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue was actually written for Shirley Bassey. Going back to Tom and Crystal, their album they recorded that Ricky Lee turned down, One From The Heart, was the Academy Award nominated soundtrack. It's also interesting to note when Tom and Crystal were working together, that's when he met a hand in the studio, a woman who was working there who was Kathleen Brennan, who he ended up marrying a few years later, and they're happily married to this very day. So, interesting little twist. Do you know who Crystal Gale's sister is? It's Loretta Lynn. This is Loretta Lynn's Blue Kentucky Girl album. I think it went to number, It was this was her fourth LP, and I think it got into the top 10, the title track got to number five, I, I do believe. But what I like about this, aside from that it's Loretta and it's always good, she covers Connie Smith on here, then and only then, which leads me to Connie Smith. I mentioned her a few weeks back. This album here, Connie Downtown Country, has the track then and only then on it. It also has the Hurtins all over. And this would prove to be Connie's last five, top five album and her last top five hit. This album's cool too, because on this album, it has a track called Born a Woman, which is a great song. It's a cover song. It's not, well, Connie did it, but she had a hit with it. And that was covered by Nick Lowe. Nick Lowe covered Born to Be a Woman on his 1977 EP, Bowie EP, which he did as a joke to answer back to David Bowie's Lowe. What's cool about this album, and you need this album, this is Nick Lowe's debut album called Jesus of Cool. In America, it was called Pure Pop for Now People. Solid record. You, need, you basically need almost everything by Nick Lowe. On that Bowie EP with Born a Woman, there was another song called Mary, M Marie Provost, or Prevost, or he says Mary Prevost. That is on this album. There's a story behind that which is shrouded in Hollywood lore, and that is that Mary Prevost, or Marie Prevost, was a Canadian silent film actress, and she had a bit of popularity. She was in several silent movies and stuff, and she was actually in F. Scott's F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Beautiful and the Damned. But as fame started to wane, she turned to drink and drugs and died at the age of 40. She drank herself to death. Now, the weird part about this is when she died, she died alone or people thought she was alone. She was actually in her apartment all locked up with her pet dachshund or weenie dog. The Hollywood rumor was the little dog went nuts and ate his former owner as she lay there dead. The coroner said, it's somewhat true, the little weenie dog actually bit her all over the arms and legs trying to pull her and wake her up not knowing that she was dead. He didn't really eat her, but it makes for a great song that Nick Lowe did on here, and it makes for some great Hollywood uh, rumors, shall we say which is pretty interesting stuff. So, how did we get to Nick Lowe and a weenie dog? Let's just backtrack, and I hope you followed me on the whole thing. Nick Lowe did Born a Woman, which is on this Connie Smith album, which also has The Hurtins All Over, which is on Loretta Lynn's album, Blue Kentucky Girl, Loretta Lynn is Crystal Gale's sister. Crystal Gale sang with Tom Waits, who also was romantically involved with Ricky Lee Jones, who turned down singing with Tom Waits, and that's why he ended up singing with Crystal, which is where he met his wife. How's that? I hope you were able to follow me on that, and I hope if you see anything cool, You'll write me a note and let me know or send me an email. You can always instant message me or whatever here through Instagram. But get in touch. Just let me know if you're looking for anything or if you're interested in any of these things. And I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. And I hope to see you next week for What's in the Shop. You guys take care. Keep on rocking. Woo!